Hello everybody! Welcome to the ninth session of Curse of Strahd. As you can see, uh, it's just me and Baka tonight. Say hi, oh. Baka. Hello. Um, I ate everybody else. Well, that's not true. And I gained their powers. He did eat Grizz, though. Yep. In exactly the way that you think he did. <laughs> um, so, uh, as before we begin tonight's game... Uh, a couple quick announcements for everyone. First of all, is to follow us on all the socials. That's Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, and TikTok. Those last two we don't use. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I said YouTube, didn't I? That's what you're watching sure. us on. <laughs> oh. Um, then, Backer, this comes out on Friday. Mm hmm So, you have an announcement. I do. Um, so we mentioned it last week, but officially we have a new campaign starting we don't know when for sure yet um maybe this coming week maybe the week after um we have our new campaign it's called glory of the giants it's a D D 5e homebrew game that takes place in Faerun. um and that's about takes place about 50 years or so after the events of the lost song of Fandelver. um so it'll be a lot of fun. There'll be some there'll be some Easter eggs, some hints and nods at things that you may know if you've watched that series, but or watch the rest of our Faerun campaigns. Uh, but they aren't necessary to watch uh, before watching Glory of the Giants. So you can jump right in with us and our new players. Um, I haven't announced the players yet. I might tease them in the Discord. Uh, so or the Twitter. We'll find out, I guess. So follow again. Follow us on the socials. Um, and we're very excited to bring you this new campaign. It will be a lot of fun. Um, and hope you join us. Interesting point of order here. I don't want to get too far into spoilers. But does this campaign take place after the assumed consequences of Lost Song? Or does it take place in the other thing? We'll have to find out. Maybe it plays with that a little bit. We don't know. Ooh, Ooh, how interesting. Um, so yeah, Glory of the Giants, that's cool. That's super fun. I just uh, dropped my D10, so I can't use that today. What what else do we need to talk about before we begin? The trees, how are the trees doing? The trees are doing well. I'm thinking I might have to remove the spider web, just because it's so thick. The spider can make a new web, so... That's true. Um, the high winds have died down, so I might reprop up all the sunflowers because they all got knocked over because we got high winds consistently for a couple weeks. But yeah, they're doing pretty good. I see, I see. So, I don't think I can stall any longer. Um, you know, I can say this one thing. Um, over the next few weeks, while we are figuring things out with certain... Uh, players in Curse of Strahd. Um, we will be having probably some shorter episodes that will be dealing with players one-on-one. -on -one. Think about kind of like the point five sessions that we had in Lost Song when and I had rhyme. my baby and with Rhyme. Um, where they're kind of more character focused uh, sessions. That's basically what we're going to do. Uh, so today it's all about Backer and the character that he's playing, which is... <gasps> I forgot to change my name on the Roll20. It's Gar. It's Gar. He's returning. It's Gar. We're doing a Gar session. So, uh, as we jump back into the realm of Barovia, we are going to rewind the clock a little bit because it's been a moment since we last caught up with Gar. Um, if you recall, Baka and audience, the last time that we saw Gar was on his very bad, no good, horrible, awful day, um, where you had just been expelled from Velaki, uh, on account of a... Uh, kind of running through the front gate... Well, sure, but it, it was a vampire infestation in the coffin maker's <laughs> shop first, and then the guards came to get you, and then you ran through the front gate. And then you toddled off into the woods for a little bit, had a conversation yeah, with Strahd. People in this campaign love toddling off. They do. You met Gundrick, 
Mm -hmm. And you went to go and save a little girl from certain death uh, in Lake Zarevich. You returned said girl, and when you were returning her, you began to feel a pull in a different direction past uh, Valaki. So you left Gundrick alone with Redkeep and his big old iron chest of gold. And you began walking. Uh, what's happened to Gar today, to say the least? So you, tr you trudge through the woods, uh, past the lake, and woods is pretty much all you see. If I remember correctly, I did make you roll for encounters as you went, and you didn't hit any. Mm -hmm. So you walk and you walk and you walk uh, until... And there is, you know, an ever-present layer of mist in Barovia, but uh, you walk until the mist gets thicker. And you keep walking still. Um, and, you know, the the forests I've, I've described enough, they don't really change that much um, outside of the clutching branches and low-hanging almost colorless canopies of the trees. But there hits a point when you are walking through the mist where the trees begin to get thicker. They condense their numbers into smaller spaces. Um, and with this, it's almost imperceptible, but the color does slightly shift and become ever so fuller. I don't want to say brighter. Brighter is the wrong word, but fuller is not a bad one. The browns of the tree bark become more brown. The canopy becomes more green. Um, and it's still muted and bland, but there is a sense of a different kind of life here. And it's in a small uh, section of the woods. And you feel the pull guiding you into the thicket of that. You push through further and further until eventually you come to a clearing. And you walk for hours, essentially, getting here. You enter this clearing, uh, and it's maybe 30 feet wide at most. It's not super duper big. But surrounding you as you emerge are flowers um, of deep purple color that reside in clumps around. The grass is overgrown and green. Uh, trees mark the outside of this clearing. And you look up and you can see uh, above you through that layer of mist, you see stars and the night sky and the moon. Um, and as you drag yourself along, completely exhausted from the day, the last thing that you see before you is uh, a very old and weathered yew tree that sits standing guard at the edge of the clearing. Um, you're exhausted. Is there anything that Gar would want to do when he gets here? Um, after looking at like the stars and everything, he'd want to, like, partially out of exhaustion, partially out of wanting to do so, he kind of kneels down, his massive forearms uh, touching his knuckles onto the ground to kind of balance himself there as he reaches his trunk out to sniff at some of the flowers. 
Cool. Make a nature check for me. Nature check. Guard, do you have like a thousand exhaustion or something? I can't remember. I don't think you have any. He's, he probably has a couple of exhaustion. It'll be a disadvantage. Just, just naturally. Yeah, that's doing it. That's good. I like that. Disadvantage. Um. Hey, 13. Not bad for disadvantage. 13. Uh, so you so it's a purple flower with like a, a yellow core that is uh, longer and wider in the center and then it kind of like tears down to a thinner uh, like longer spine basically um with a 13 you aren't exactly sure what the flower is but it's probably poisonous i do not eat it then <laughs> not that i was planning on it to begin with just little sniffs of it um he kind of push himself up if he's able to kind of move towards this tree Yeah, you uh, begin moving towards the tree. You're moving towards the tree. Do you go all the way up to it? Yeah, his current idea is to uh, rest next to it. Yeah, as long as he's not getting like pulled towards anything anymore. Yeah. Might as well rest. As you uh, move towards the tree, make a deck save. Uh oh. Um, do I see it coming? Nope. Alright, it's still pretty heckin' good anyway. Uh, 18. 18, yeah. You uh, begin moving towards the tree, and your foot almost falls in a large hole in the ground right at the base of the tree. It's probably, like, 8 foot wide and at least 10 feet deep. Um... And you look down, and, and inside of this hole, there are large snaking roots that dig further into the earth. Uh, it's up to you if you want to investigate it further or not. Um, I guess I'd try to see if it looked like somebody was digging, or if it just looked like the earth fell away, like through erosion or something. Okay, you can roll investigation or perception. Investigation or oh, perception. Do perception. Uh, damn disadvantage. It's an eight. An eight. It, at this point in time, with the way that your brain is and your body is, it's it's a hole. You'll deal with it later. It doesn't look like anything will come out of there. Oh, I do need to rest, though. I'm so very tired. I'll just like flop down lean his back up against the tree set the scythe down if he can I don't know if he can let go of the scythe or not yet uh yeah you can let go of it you're not attuned yeah I'll kind of like lean it with the blade away from me but on like the uh, the blade on the ground and the pole against the tree mm -hmm. as uh, he just like leans his head back against the bark and closes his eyes Trying to find sleep. Yeah. So you lean your head back against the uh, back of the tree. And you feel unconsciousness begin to welcome you. Almost uncaring of what's around you, you know. If, if something comes, you'll deal with it. If not, you're not going to let it interrupt your sleep. Um... And you do fall asleep right there. It's almost easy, you know. Your body wills it so, but even in this state, your mind kind of races through events that have previously transpired. I mean, if nothing else, the loss of Alaren 
earlier today is really ringing true in your head and it's it's kind of impossible to get out um even in your dreams he's still there and he's vibrant as ever um you you know imagine you and him walking through the mists together again that first time and then later today with Bernadette the cockatrice who was the last part of him that you had left that you decided to just let go you don't have anything left of him anymore and in this dream you still feel it's hard to know if it's loss or guilt you kind of see him still standing next to you walking off into the mist alone then you blink and you can see inside his chest a small like flame bright and vibrant and orange uh, and as he walks away through the mist it gets lighter and thinner and smaller and you watch as the color kind of shifts from a bright orange to a darker gray black um, do you choose to follow him yeah I think so okay you follow after and as you're walking the trees going by you the flame still maintaining that same distance you walk begins to pick up to a run uh, as you chase after you watch as the flame just stops there uh, do you keep running after him or do you stop you're still in the um, mist if the flame like stops uh, Gar would stop too to see what it's what it's doing you stop and it just stays there Kind of approach it slowly then. Okay. You approach slowly and the mist clears as you walk through it. And now you look within at long rows of tilled soil. The sky is a deep blood red with few clouds. Uh, that perforate that barrier between ground and sky. And there's nothing around you but tilled soil except for a hill not far off in the distance with a tree on top of it that is either dead or dying. And on top of that hill sitting in front of the tree kind of cross-legged on a stump or a log you see this being i guess made of twisted vines and roots for a body the head is a light in this greenish black fire and it's not even a head just a carved pumpkin as big as you are and as it sits there one leg folded on top of the other and on top of that leg is a scythe a very familiar scythe and in one hand it has a rock that is just <laughs> sharpening the blade with you see now that black flame that you were following it 
is somewhere up there with it. Feeling, uh, feeling anger rush over him from the previous encounter he had with uh, this being. He just like his face twists up as he starts marching up the hill towards it. Yeah, you begin marching up the hill. It it keeps doing what it's doing. The fire around its head is not very bright at all. It's barely even uh, like licking at the base of the orange pumpkin. And as you walk past the rows of tilled soil, you begin to see uh, decaying pumpkins that are just resting in the ground. Some of them are half out of the ground. Bits of rot and mold beginning to encase the outside. Some of them have holes. Some of them are sunken in at the top with, you know, uh, their own, like, greenish-brown vines that are twisting and coming out of the ground. And it just keeps doing that thing where it's sharpening the blade. You trudge up the hill, uh, and it, it is sitting on a log next to, like, an extinguished campfire. There's another log on the other side of it. Um, and that black, grey fire that you were following, that you thought was a Laren, now rests in the blade of that scythe. Uh, he'll, he'll stand there for a moment just staring at this uh, being uh, sharpening the blade Avenge this what are you doing here you you speak to it you are talking and Make an insight check. Damn, I don't even have to roll disadvantage on that. That's some garbage. Um, three. Three. Uh, I'll say at this point your disadvantage is gone. Let's get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. Didn't matter. Two is the first roll I did made, so. It just keeps sharpening. Were you the... What was calling me? For... You watch as it hoists up the scythe, so now it's vertical, and then puts it down on the other side, and picks up that stone and keeps going on the other one. You made me get that for you, and then you just wanted me to bring it to you or something? Why aren't you... You were talking to me before, why don't you talk to me now? At this, you see the head kind of tilt sideways. Not at what uh, you're saying about it talking, but at the mention of you bringing it the scythe. Uh, it kind of stops and tilts. And then it begins to stand up. And it itself is uh, 10 or 12 feet tall. It's taller than you are. Um... And as it stands, uh, it kind of straightens out and you hear the creaking of wood as it goes. And it pulls the scythe down. It looks down at you and the features don't move. They are stationary. The eyes and the mouth are just cut out. And it says, No, it's yours. And it holds the scythe forward. I suppose I did find it. He'll reach out and just like slowly wrap each individual finger around it. Um. Mm. Mm. Were you the one making me go get it though? Because there's 
I was trying to save a little girl, and then I, something told me to do, get this instead. It's just still kind of uh, standing there. When it's not talking or doing something, it's eerily motionless. Mm -hmm. uh, he watches the head again, kind of just rapidly tilts and stays towards the scythe. It says, You work for me now. What are you trying to... I used to work for somebody before, and it wasn't good. Uh, what is it you want... You're trying to make me do? Do I have an option here? The head kind of tilts back to you. Uh, even now, it's kind of like lopsided. Like, the body can't support it in its current state. Um, you ask if you have a choice, and you watch the head nods up and down. You do have a choice. Well, that's weirdly comforting, if that makes sense. Better than being chained up and made to fight. <sighs> what, um... Sorry, it's just weird talking to you after the last encounter we had together where we were pulling each other through the dirt and you put something on my head, I think. Everybody didn't like it. Oh. What is it that you were looking for me to do for you? Your head snaps up right again. Kill. Strat. Oh. I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad idea, but he's... I don't know if you've noticed, but he's, he's pretty strong. I tried hitting him before, and he just bit me, and I didn't feel very good after that. Still don't, to be honest with you. I had friends trying to help me, but then I guess I can't trust them, so I don't know where I'm at right now with everything. Uh, you watch as it kind of, like brings up one of the viney hands and points to the blade and then points down uh, just with the forearm to the campfire next to it Do you, can this start fires? is that what this thing's for? the creature nods and lifts up again oh not much for magic, but I guess I can try it. Um, like, take the scythe and point it at the fire. Like, try to will it to shoot the little thing of fire out at the campfire. Make a charisma check. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, my boy Gar got a dirty 20 on that one. Dirty 20. Yeah, you uh, try and will it to shoot out fire uh, and you watch as the blade begins like sparking almost and faint bits of orange flame begin to kind of line up the blade before going out you are making flickers uh, it's not shooting off the blade or anything mm-hmm but there's something there. You have some thing. Oh. Maybe if it gets some more kindling, it'll catch easier. Um, I, I don't know that there's much around. I've just seen rotten pumpkins and things. Do you know where I can get some dry twigs and thing bark to put down? Maybe I can start the fire then. Uh, you watch as it kind of just remains where it is. And then it 
the voice kind of emanates again. The mouth not moving at all. And that voice, it, it, you hear the... It's not so much of a voice as it is just air being blown through a throat of thorns and like stationary wooden tissue. Um, it says, When ready, test. When ready, test. Now. Friend. Mm. So, are you, are you trying to say Roderick's father couldn't save Lauren then? Roderick. Yeah, he, um, he's a guy that talks to God, so I thought maybe his father could save my Alarin. But maybe not. Anger. You anger. I was angry coming up here, but now I'm very confused with things. Uh, but knowing that, uh, well, if what you say is true, that Alara is gone, there is some anger there. Not being able to save him. All the problems I caused for everybody. <laughs> no! Is that what? Ah! I, but I couldn't be angry before. I tried doing like I would in the fighting pits, and it wasn't working. I can try. Uh, he like tr tries to dig in to where he usually finds his rage from, uh, and tries to get it to spark. Like he saw the sparks on the um coming from the scythe he's imagining it working like that where it like sparks up and then starts a flame inside of him mm -hmm. roll a charisma check charisma check hell um that will be an eight an eight you uh begin trying to flex whatever muscles you have that make your anger tick whether mental or physical you begin trying to flex them and as you try and muster forth the emotion he watches it is kind of studying you. Uh, and then it kind of like very woodenly is mocking what you're doing. Hey. I'm trying here. I, I can't find that same place I used to go to uh, to get my rage to happen because it hasn't come to me in so many days. I take anger. You, t you took anger? You took you took that away? The head goes down and then up. Why would you take that from me? More! kind of whips sideways and then back and then kind of like points very straightly into your chest more I need more it nods again where can I find more if mine's gone Oh. Oh. 
I guess most of it came from when I was in prison, but now it's been so long, I am mad about the people dying around me. The innocent people here and uh, my friend Gertruda. Well, Lauren made me mad during that. But I know he had his reasons. And if Lauren's dead, I'm pretty mad about that, too. But that's more of a sad mad. You watch as, uh, from behind you, towards the tree, there is, like, a small black bird that just... <laughs> and flutters down onto the branch. And kind of, like, hops along the branch a little bit and kind of tilts its head and looks back and you watch as the uh, creature in front of you without turning around physically its head just kind of tilts and swivels on a point and then swivels all the way back around and it begins walking down the hill um uh, <laughs> it's like just very confused just like making noises to himself starts to follow after <laughs> just holding the scythe like well, you can't just walk away when i'm trying to figure out what you're saying he just keeps trudging along through the hey. soil you, you, uh, can you respond in more than one i'm trying to trying to help you want we both want to get rid of strahd I, uh, um, uh, I'll tr I'll try to get mad again. <laughs> she like tries to, out of desperation, dig again for that rage. Make a charisma check. Come on, Gar. Hey, uh, that is a thirteen this time. A thirteen. Thirteen is the DC for this. Woo! You uh, kind of stop for a second as it keeps walking forwards and you really focus on all the things that make you mad the as much as you hate to revisit the places the sight that you beheld as Gertrude's flesh was ripped away from her bone and her neck and was consumed by Strad right in front of your eyes after all the work that you put in to save her after how good and normal of a person she was after Alaren was just torn to pieces when he was held in front of that vampire and Roderick's spell went awry and took him out. And as you kind of focus on that image, you uh, see the creature kind of stop and the head swivel again. And you're really focusing back on that memory and you start to wonder if that spell went awry. And from there, you begin to feel anger welling up inside of you. And it doesn't reach a point where it changes anything. You don't feel the rage overtake you, but there is a spark there. There is a fire. And it's beginning to bubble and boil. And as it begins to come down, uh, the creature is kind of just staring at you again. And then, uh, from it being motionless, you watch as it kind of altogether obtains a different kind of physicality to the way that it's uh, moving. You watch as it kind of picks up, uh, very full of life and almost youthful and you hear the voice contort to something different as it says I'm not scared of you my name's Jack would you like to be friends? Hmm. wow you uh, you've changed yes um I'm Gar, if you didn't know already. He watches it stares back at you and says, 
I'm Gar. Oh. That's a, that's weird to hear. And it raises its long, elongated wooden hand and snaps its fingers. And you awaken. Oof. You are sitting in front of a tree in a grove. That was a very strange dream. Um, clear this out of the way first. This is the first time Gar slept in a long time. Um, he had two different sources of missing HP. Do either of those heal? Your HP is reset. All of it? Because yeah. one of it was from Vampire Spawn, the other was from Night Hags. Uh, for the sake of this, just reset all of it. Okay. You I'm have in. long rested and you've leveled to level 5. What? Oh. Look at my boy. Your exhaustion's healed. No more penalties for anything. You're just max HP. Because oh. I can't remember any of that crap. <laughs> That's fun. He looks to see if the scythe is still leaning against the tree next to him. Uh, yeah, the scythe is leaning against the tree next to you. It doesn't look like it's moved at all. Like, grab it as he uses it to um, hoist himself up from the ground so he's standing again. Mm -hmm. like grabbing both hands. Oh. That's why I was supposed to come here for that dream. Um. Oh, maybe. Um. He's gonna like. He's not gonna go into a rage, but he's gonna look for that spot that he felt ignite in the dream to see if it happened for real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Make a charisma check. Charisma check. <laughs> there we go. Back to a three. Back to a three. Uh. You try and muster the rage, and it's still not coming, but you do almost feel a little bit more hopeful that it might. Ooh. Maybe it's coming back. Mm. Oh. What if Lauren's truly gone, like that thing said? Hmm. Maybe I can't trust them then, like Strahd was saying. I can't trust what Strahd's saying either. He killed Gertruda after he said if we found them, we'd be able to leave safely. Can I trust that pumpkin man either? I don't know who I can trust now. Bernadette's gone. But it's probably for the better. I guess Gundrick was pretty cool. Hopefully he found the others. Ooh. Um He's gonna he's gonna like pause for a moment and then turn around and look at the tree and like look up at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look up. Make a nature check for me. Hey, that's pretty good. Um uh, nature modifier uh, 18. Yeah, so you instantly recognize this as a yew tree. Um, it's got this like thick, uh, heavy trunk that is almost segmented and and uh, runs long. And these beautiful, uh, vibrant leaves. It is stationary and unmoving, but you do also uh, note as well as you're kind of studying over it uh, back down, it, the roots are visible in that hole again that you were looking at. Oh. Uh, Lauren didn't know much about plants other than what they meant to animals. But he mentioned a yew tree before. And uh, Trogdon's dad was a yew tree, I remember. Or he said something about a yew tree, I think, being his father. Hmm. But, uh... That's all, um... Hmm. 
He's just gonna like, out of curiosity, take the butt end of the scythe and stick it down in the hole, just like poke around to see if anything's down there. Make an investigation check. Do, 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 do. Playing with my dice box. I set it down. Investigation. <laughs> uh, it's a three. So, the soil is still loose a little bit down there, which in and of itself kind of makes you to go, okay. Uh, and you poke around, and you are hitting something hard, but you're not shifting any of the soil away to make out what it is. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I was hitting something hard, though. Yeah, to, to get a full bearing on it, you'd have to roll better or get down there. Yeah, he was going to, like, get down on his hands and knees and, like, stick one of his hands in there and try to grab whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you uh, begin pulling away the loose soil and dirt. Uh, and as you do so, you begin shifting it away, and you do begin to see faint uh, bits of glowing light. Uh, it's not coming from directly underneath of you, but it appears when you're moving the soil away, you are uncovering almost like a tunnel or something that goes underneath towards the tree, and from within that, there is a glowing light. Oh, I don't think underneath trees are supposed to glow like that. That's weird. Oh. He's going to try and keep going, digging at the light to see what it is. Yeah, you keep going down, uh, and at this point, you're gonna have to like get into the hole to make out. Oh what yeah, it if is. it's big enough, he'll get in there. Yeah, the hole's big enough for you to jump in. Um, the tunnel itself is not. The tunnel is maybe like that wide. Mm. Um, but as you're moving around, you kind of begin to make out other small, tiny ones that kind of make up like a <sighs> a tryptophobic's worst nightmare, really. <laughs> Um, and from within, you can kind of see this this light, and you peer your head around, and from inside, uh, there's something green and glowing within. You can kind of make out. You can maybe stick your arm in one of them. Stick my trunk in there and try to feel around for it. Yeah, you stick your trunk in, uh, and you feel the end of it make contact. And it feels like almost like a gem, but it's kind of made of wood or plant material, as best you can tell. But it's stuck in there. Oh. Um. I don't know what this thing is. Uh. I'm gonna try wrap his trunk around it to see if he can pull it out. Okay. You try and wrap it around. Um, and as you do so, you can feel it's cold to the touch. You try and wrap it out, and as you begin getting a, a leverage to pull, uh, you hear something in your mind. Uh, a voice, an actual voice. Uh, and it says, Hello, Gar. Let go of it. Who's, who's talking to me in my head? Whose roots are you in? Mm. That's a good question. Whose roots am I in? There's a pause here. Uh, as you wager it was trying to be smart and it just isn't getting the reception that it wants. Um, <laughs> it's as... barking up the wrong tree for that. <laughs> you hear it say, I am the ancient you. Oh, like the you tree, not the ancient me. I just want to say I'm Kind of old, I guess, for most humans, but young for Loxodons. Oh, um, 
Is this glowing thing yours in here? It is for now. For oh, now. No. That will change very soon. Is it because I was taking it? I can stop taking it if you don't want me to. I was just curious. It is not the reason, but you should still stop if you can. Oh, I'm, I, uh, I can. It's, it's. I don't need to take it. Would you like to get out of the hole, Gar? I was just about to ask, do you want to continue this conversation or I'm not eating your roots? It seems invasive now that you're talking to me. Yes. All right. <laughs> Start to climb it up. Yeah, you climb out of the hole. Uh, it's weird because you're looking at the tree as you climb out of the hole and it's uh, it's exactly the same. It's completely where it was. Doesn't have a face like the Great Deku tree? Nope. No face. <laughs> It just is what it is. It's a tree. Sorry, I got up in your business. I, uh, you're not used to trees talking. Normally, we do not. However, I grew the desire for company. Uh, oh, do you know um, Drogden? I did. Oh, so you've heard. I hear everything. I am more privy to information in Barovia than Strahd himself. You hear everything. All of nature is connected. I hear everything that it can. Well, I'm not too concerned about it because I didn't say anything bad, I guess. So, well, that's kind of cool. You can hear Did you hear when I was talking to Bernadette? before? Do you know who she is? I do. Um. Um. Oh. Uh. I don't know. I, was, I thought I had a thought, but I didn't. i sorry, I haven't talked to a tree before, and I don't know what to say. Oh, was it okay that I slept against you last night? I'm sorry. It is fine. Okay. Oh, were you calling me here? I was. Oh. I saw that you were risk of becoming lost. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't having a very good time. wasn't being a, a very good uh, companion to my party, but maybe they're not, weren't being good companions, I don't know. It's all very confusing. What I have found is humanoids of all caliber share one common trait. They are selfish. I am sure you are the same way. But people here, I feel, exhibit this quality in excess. I suppose that would be true. I am sure you have questions, Garfentis. Rest assured, I will answer them all. 
for I have nothing left to lose. Why, why do you have nothing left to lose? Draugdon was my last hope, and he is now gone. In his place, I am dying, and there is nothing that can be done for me to see the sun again. Sorry to hear that. Sorry we couldn't save Drogden. I was told not to create Drogden. I thought Nothing was saving Barovia. It was time for the trees to interject. I was wrong. It wasn't Barovia that killed Draugdon. It was the rest of the world. trying to help but maybe he wasn't as smart as I thought he was no he was not I mean, he he saved me from my imprisonment so I just thought he couldn't do any wrong but his actions over his final few days seem to show otherwise. I believe he was the ire of Strahd's affection for some time. Like Strahd had a crush on him? That I do not know. But Strahd did spend time with him outside of your group. Strahd came to talk to me too. Was I his ire? No. As is my opinion, a backup option. Oh. Hmm. Do you think I shouldn't trust the others like he said? No, I do not. They are rash and irrational and act on impulse and their base sense of morality. Their stupidity or their ethics will get you killed in the end. I mean, I kind of acted rashly at points too. Like when Strahd killed Gertruda, one of my best friends, I attacked him, and then he hurt me a lot. Because you are no different. I suppose that's true. Hmm. So do you know, do you know the, um, the guy with the pumpkin head? I do. Is he a bad guy or a good guy? I don't know what to think of him. It is not a guy. It is a demon. Oh, those are bad, right? 
As per your sense of morality, it would be considered evil. Oh. Should I not take his job then? That is your choice. I believe I know what it is doing, for I was here when it broke free. See, he wants me to kill Strahd. Which seems to be a lot of people's plans, but nobody really knows how. Madam Eva told us some things, but all we had was a book. I believe that this demon can kill Strahd. It is one of the many dark powers that Strahd was made from. If the dark powers made Strahd, why does this one want to kill him? It broke free long ago, and when it did, it desired to take over the realm of Barovia for itself. Strahd was the new ruler. Oh, so... It's good that it wants to get rid of Strahd, but it's not good that it wants to take over, because it's probably not much better than Strahd. I believe it depends. Would you rather people live in fear for the rest of their lives, or not live at all? Oh. I don't care for either of those options if I'm honest with you. Then if you dislike both, whom would you rather kill? Mm -hmm. oh. That's a hard choice, because does that mean that there would still be options to change what the other one was doing after you killed the first one? Because if that's the case, you'd want to get rid of the one that kills everybody, because then you could still save them from being afraid. I assume that one of them will kill the other. Why does it want me to do it? Because you are vengeful. It is a creature of blood and fury. It feeds off of souls and is fueled by anger. You, in essence, as a fighter, are fueled by anger. Sorry, my headphones are dying and I'm trying to plug it in without looking at the outlet. I suppose I am. Um, I grew up having to fight. I don't know what choice to make. You may think on it. To 
just start staring because he's thinking on it. <laughs> yeah, the tr the tree does not say anything. Instead, um, it waits for you to talk. You can uh, continue to think about that and then reply with that, or you can ask other questions. So you you said you hear everything. I am connected to nature. Other trees hear everything, and they tell me if you are attuned to listening to the voices of the plants, you may hear what they are saying as well. well a lot of plant-based things have been talking to me lately, but I don't think it's the same as what you're talking about. The demon is not a plant. Well, uh, yeah, I knew that. That's why I said, that's why I was saying plant-based, because it wasn't actually a plant, but it looks like one. It emerged in a pumpkin field owned by a family here in Barovia. It what took the to form them? of that which it saw first. Oh. The sun went to communicate with the beast and was killed instantly. Then it took to the parents in the farmhouse. It was stopped by a group of adventurers. And when they were done, one of them lay dead and Strahd appeared. He took the remains of the demon, tossed the scythe in Lake Zarevich, and kept the head, and did away with the adventurers. Where did he take the remains? It is my belief that the head remains in Castle Ravenloft. I wonder if he wants his head back then. I am sure it will ask. So, does that mean I'm evil now? So I have to choose between helping Strahd kill a dev demon or a demon kill Strahd. Or not help Strahd kill a demon, but be passive about it so it happens. You can rebuke the demon. How do I do that? You live the rest of your life refusing its whims. I could do that. Would you help me do that? I cannot. Oh. For in a few days, I right. will perish. What's going to happen to your glowy thing, then? What is a glowy thing? Is that like your heart or your brain? No. It is a seed. It allows for plants to grow regardless on the area or environment in which they are. In my case, I was alive before, and it helped me to communicate with you humanoids, and to create Draugdon. So it will still help things grow when you're gone? It will. That's good. 
this is like the only really pretty place I've seen since being here. You can actually see the stars at night. And the flowers are pretty, though dangerous. It's no response. So, when I was first asking about if you could hear everything, we got off track of what I was trying to get to. Um, do you know uh, stories, then? Do I know stories? Mm. Of what? Well, I was wondering if you knew the story of the, um, the princess and the prince that wanted to get married, but their parents wouldn't let them. I have a deck of cards if you know it so that you can... I never heard the ending of it. And I really liked that story. No, I have oh. not heard that one. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Um, do you know, I know I'm not, I'm not necessarily supposed to trust them because they're people and people are bad. But uh, do you know what happened to everybody else? Did it, do you know if Alarn actually died? He did. The rest are... The last I heard, they had left Valaki. Okay, so they got out safely then? They did. That's good, I suppose. And did... Do you know if Gundrick found them? I do not yet. Okay. Do you know who Gundrick is? I do not yet. Oh. Okay. He's a dwarf, if you hear about him. He's... He's pretty nice. He was my friend until I came here. I, I suppose he still is, but I just don't know if I'll ever see him again. I've got to be holding off this demon forever. Oh, should I not be holding the scythe if I don't want to? If I want to hold off the demon, probably. Okay, just throw it on the ground. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? Um, I don't know because he's kind of come here oh I guess he didn't really ask why the tree was calling him here just if it was the thing calling him here you kind of got the impression it wanted some company before it died oh okay yeah then I would I would spend Gar would spend the days that the tree has left with it just talking with it and learning what he can from it okay. not touching the scythe <laughs> yeah so uh are there any specific areas of Barovia that you want to learn about? Um. Hmm. I guess he would try to get because he like he's he wants to know more about anything he can about Gertrude's life, but she lived in town, so he doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. know that the tree would know how much, or how much the tree would know of that. Yeah, well, you do ask kind of about that, and the information that they get from towns is limited. Mm. Anything that happens in the wild is much easier to glean. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, wild areas Gar was even in. So he went to Barovia... Oh, is Bernadette okay? <laughs> you ask and you learn that Bernad Bernadette is still alive. Wow. Just a few well, days after Blair releasing her. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's half a second at one point where I almost improvised Blair eating Bernadette. <laughs> so. Well, this is just a few days after you left, so... <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's still good. Um... Yeah, because Gar didn't really interact with things outside of towns too much. And to be fair, he's only in the two towns. Hmm. 
So I guess he asked, he'd ask if there's any other places like this grove. Sure. Um, the tree responds uh, with a thought about a place called Yester Hill. On that hill resides another large tree, like it, but not. Um, and it explains a little bit about this tree. It's called a Gulthius tree. And this thing is partly responsible for uh, the creation of blights. The Ancient Yew is part of a council of trees that involves the Gulthius tree and a couple of other trees um, that have been recently determining whether they should intervene in Strahd's plans. Um, and most of them said no. It, in particular, was most adamant about saying no. But the Yew didn't quite trust it because the Gulthius tree is born from vampirism. Um... However, it is a tree, and it's not necessarily evil. So its opinion is valid. Um, that's the closest thing that you will get to a grove like this. It's twisted, it's warped, and it's inhabited by druids. But it's kind of similar. Um... And that tree won't talk to you. Okay, he's going to ask if the other trees are lonely, if he should go to them after the you dies. No, he mentions um, the other trees will not talk to you unless you have the seed that it has used. Uh, and we don't want to take the seed because that's what makes this place grow. That is a point. Although, uh, at the mention of that, it says to you, and it's been a couple of days since you've been here. It says, When I die, should you desire, you may take the seed with you. I have no descendants anymore to pass it down to. So I'd be like your adopted son. I do not believe in this. Oh. I just haven't seen my parents in a very long time. Madam Ava gave me this note, but I can't look at it. It says where they are. I can't look at it till Strahd's dead, and he's not yet. It may help fight against Strahd. It has my energy in it. And you may talk to the trees for aid. Okay. However, you will have to convince them. I, I can try to. Alternatively, leave it here and the grove will continue to blossom. Okay. I'll have to think on that then. I don't want it to take this beauty from this land, but if it can help spread beauty, because if we can use it to get rid of Strahd, that would be good too. That was Draugton's task. Well, then I should, I should do that, because I don't want Drogden's task to be left unfinished. Um, uh, what well, did can you I... think of Drogden? I liked him. He was, it was fun to watch him learn about things. Um, was he? A good person. 
I think so. I think he was naive, which caused him to do things that uh, some people may not have agreed with. But I think at his core, he was good. And he tried to do good. I see. I just hope they took him out of the Lockheed when they left. Do you know, did they get him out? Uh, at this point, it's been a couple days, as per my recollection. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah. So the tree responds and says, They left the body, but took his... There's kind of a pause. Heart. something hmm. um, oh is it possible to kill Strahd without giving power to that demon I do not know anymore and I said I'd be its friend just can I still like not help him even though I said I was gonna be his friend may try to resist. I fear it will come for you. Okay. Well, I'll try my best to resist then. Because I don't want to bring that evil upon the land as well. Um, if I'm going to remove Strahd, should I go back to the others or should I find new people to help me I would do neither I would think... stay and train myself instead you think I could do it alone with the help of the trees possibly I do not know but I do not trust the other humanoids. That's fair. Humanoids were the ones that took me away from my family. Not saying all of them would do that, but... I do not know that your rage will come back. Unless you confront the demon. did say he took it. I found some kind of spark in there, but not enough to where it was before. So I have to kill him to get it back? Or do I just tell him to give it back? I do not know. As with most of the dark powers, Death is complicated. Okay. Let's see what I can do when that happens then. Is there anything else that you wish to talk to the tree about? I don't think so. Okay. So you spend a few days with it, uh, and as they progress, the voice gets weaker and weaker. Um, until eventually you, f you feel as if you are in the last few hours. Before it goes, it says to you, I am thankful to you, Garfentis, for providing an old tree with companionship before the end. Of course, I wouldn't want to be alone in 
my last days either. It was nice to get to know you and what your views on everything were, was. I do not know if you are worthy to accept it, but should you desire, the seed is yours. If I'm not worthy, I'll find one who is to carry on your legacy. I do not believe any humanoid would ever be. But I entrust it to your judgment. And thank you for providing my son with your person. And that is all. I wish you luck wherever it may take you. Thank you. And from that point on, there is no longer any response. Where does Gar go from this point on? Um, he'd sit with the tree for a little bit longer. Not like, not like a day, but like a few hours longer. And then eventually he would go down into the roots to get the, um, the gem that was down there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, kind of take it out with his trunk, hold it gingerly in his hands. And put it into a put it in a bag by itself that's like on his waist, so it's right there. Um, and then he just he leaves the scythe where he threw it originally, or like dropped it originally. Mm -hmm. Just leaves it there in the grove. Um, and I guess he's going to. Did he say any of the other locations of the other trees, or just the one on Yester Hill? Uh, did you ask about the other ones? Yeah, you would have asked about the other ones. Yeah. Um, the ancient oak tree uh, is... It's in the thicket to the southeast of Van Richten's Tower. It's just above... Argen Vost held. Okay. Uh, and then the ancient spruce is in the southernmost uh, Svalich woods. All the way underneath of Barovia, the village of Barovia. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess, like, his... Because he's got a train... Ow. Got a train still. Um, so he would be, like training himself as he goes like defending himself from things um and make his way towards the great oak first and like do a loop from the great oak to the uh i forget the name of the one on yester hill yes the uh, hill is the gulfius the gulfius and then to the great spruce and like just seeing if like he's gonna he he knows they won't respond to him but he wants to go and have the seed with them and talk to them. Just be like, hey, I'm trying to help this la these lands. Trying to fight Strahd. Mm -hmm. um, the great you has passed and he mentioned the possibility of uh, the trees lending a hand in this fight. I would appreciate it if when the time comes you help or if you have a champion that could take on the seed and the legacy of the great you if you could send them to me okay so as you leave the grove um the scythe remaining where you left it you are not yet attuned to the blade 
So, do me a favor and just make me a general charisma saving throw. Okay, God, let's go. Um, Christmas save will be a 13. You leave the scythe where it is. Um, a bad thing, but Gar doesn't want it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just sitting somewhere now. You leave the scythe where it is, and you set off on your journey. As you go, your head is often when you sleep uh, bombarded with visions of Jack the pumpkin lord the demon from the farm near Lake Zarevich but for the most part you are resisting uh, and you keep going through um this journey that you're going to embark on is a long one, mm -hmm. and it will bring you to present day. Ooh. So you make your way through to the ancient oak, uh, and you find it. There is no visual uh, description of it that you got. There's no location of it that you got, really, apart from just like a general uh, kind of verbal description of, of what the area is. It takes you some time, but you do find it. And you talk to the tree, holding the seed, and nothing happens. Not that you expected it to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just wants to say his piece, um, and then you move to Yester Hill. You move to Yester Hill. This one is more difficult to get around, because there are the woods are filled with uh, blights and scarecrows and wolves and druids and berserkers. Um, it, a person such as yourself, you're intelligent enough when not raging and your rage is suppressed. Um, to know when you are outnumbered as a single person. And the closer that you get to Yester Hill, the more you worry that it's too dangerous. Oh. Might have to go to the spruce first. Wait till I'm stronger to get through here. Or maybe I go to the farm confront this demon since he's assaulting my mind but I don't know if I'm strong enough for that yet hmm. Gar doesn't have a map so he doesn't know what it looks like <laughs> he doesn't know there's a giant expanse to get over to the spruce You know what? I think he. I think it's been long enough, and the spruce isn't gonna go anywhere. He's talked to the oak already, so like the oak can kind of pass a word to. You. He's gonna go back. He's gonna try and find that farm. Okay. Uh, so you head back up north. You know where Lake Zarevich is. You've, you've been there. Mm -hmm. Um. You heard that it was around, and you spend the better part of a day uh, looking around for the farmstead, and you do find it. It's uh, on the northern side, opposite Velaki. You head up to it, and... Um, I don't have the map in this game. It's in the other game. Heck. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I'll figure it out. Um, essentially, what it is, is a tall 
farmhouse that is, I think, two stories tall. With uh, sloping roofs that are half falling in at this point. Um, that sits on a hill overlooking a large field of tilled soil with decayed pumpkins inflicted with rot. And at the far end of that field is a small hill with a dead tree on it. It's familiar. You've been here before, although not in person. Well, at least I know it's a two-story house because you count the floor you walk into first as the first floor, and then the second floor is above that. Not the ground floor and the first floor, but the first floor and the second floor making two stories. You know, it's two stories because <laughs> you can name two stories. It's not that they are called one and two, but that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> um, he's going to make his way towards that tree because that's where he saw Jack in his vision. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know that Jack can manifest himself here, but this would be like the most likely place he could. So yeah. go over to the tree. You go over to the tree and um, give me one second. Climbing up the hill, um, the tree itself. Where's my fucking shit? I don't know. Nope, I lost it. Oh well. The tree itself is long dead. It's probably been dead for a good decade at least. Um, and at the front of it, there are two logs and a small long burnt out campfire, as well as three gravestones. Uh, two of them are unnamed, but the one in the middle says Jack. He sees the name on there. He'll like look around and you'll see. Are you here, Jack? There's no response. He's gonna, like, knock on the part of his head that always hurts when the demon is, like, trying to uh, influence him. I know you're attached to me somehow. How do I talk to you? You focus back down on the gravestone and really like focus your will into communicating with this thing and you feel a hand on the back of your shoulder and you go to turn around and as you turn around the sky turns red and the outside of your vision condenses and you see the figure standing behind you looking down at you. Oh, there you are, Jack. Um... So, this is where you came from. There's no response. Okay, well, let's just get to the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. I can't be your worker. I can't do your job for you. I mean... Not in the way you want, I guess. I want to get rid of Strahd, but not to allow you to take his place. I know you're one of the dark powers, and... Removing Strahd to put another evil in his place isn't what I want. So I appreciate the help, but um, 
If you can just give me my rage back, I'll do it on my own. Uh. You hear the words come out of it. It says, No one strides, please. Me. place you just want to kill everybody you want to eat all their rage is that what's happening eat so oh, oh yes yes um yeah i that's i still can't do that for you so that's not good um so if I can just have my rage back, uh, maybe you can find somebody else who's more uh, rageful. I could help you, but it can't be me. You hear it. Go. We were friends. Don't like that you have to change your voice to say that. Um. Yes, uh. That's before I knew what you were trying to do. Um, kind of like I was friends with Alarin until I knew he was trying to do bad things. But he wasn't as bad as you are. I could forgive him. I couldn't forgive if you killed everybody. I can't be friends with somebody like that. What is it kind of tilts its big old orange head, the flames gently flickering and licking the underneath of the pumpkin. He watches it just kind of stays there motionless for a second and says Okay! Before it takes its big hand on top of your head and pushes you into the ground and you feel the dirt overtake you as you are pushed further and further down. Um, can I, like last time I tried doing this, can I grab it, try to Pull it down to me. Sure, go ahead and roll a contested athletics check. All right. All right. Gar coming in at his full strength again. Uh, 21. Okay. Okay. You got 21? Yep. It grabs the top of your head and pushes you further and further in, and you try and grab onto the arm, but you do not. Go oh, 22. That's bad for me, then. Um, as it does so, make a charisma saving throw for me. Yeah, I was about to ask if I could dig down for rage. This is for a different thing. Um. Well, this actually, I rolled decently. Oh, come on. Roll 20. Oh. It's opening my character sheet, but just the top. Uh, I should I should know this. I've been rolling charisma checks the whole time and saves. Uh, fifteen. What is Gar's worst fear or greatest shame? Um, I guess worst fear would be being imprisoned again, and greatest shame would be uh letting uh people die around him. Okay, so, as the, your body gets pushed further and further down into the dirt, you watch as, uh, all you feel is your body impacts something solid, whereas the dirt has been shifting and moving around you to cover up the top, uh, now you're hitting something hard. And as you do so, you feel the wind get knocked out of you and your body splay outwards and things begin to wrap around your arms and your legs. You are considered grappled and restrained. And there is a slight hole uh, through the dirt to which you can see upwards. It's about 30 or 40 feet from where you are and you see just the, uh, just the top of the head as it looks down. And from within the pumpkin head a bit of blue-green fire just inside, illuminating the eyes and the mouth. And you feel it connect with you. You feel it 
learn and respond. Uh, and there's a brief moment where you're stuck there looking up and you hear it say, Don't worry. I found another Maelin. Before it turns. And as it does and leaves that small uh, line of sight, you blink and the sky is back to normal. And you feel yourself back in the real world. And then a bunch of dirt just <laughs> comes caving in around you. We're going to leave Gar right there. Gar. You are now caught up to present day. Um, and dead. In your travels, <laughs> you can level up to the same level as the rest of the party. Ooh, hot dog. Um, and we'll pick up here uh, with Gar after some more development has happened in the main story. Um, oh boy, I gotta talk to Tommy. Oh boy. About some stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, good job, Backer. Well done. Thank you. We caught up with Gar a little bit. That was fun. It was fun us both talking in really low voices. For yeah, a long really. Time. It took me a Turn minute to get up into for it. The session. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took me a minute to get into that voice, but I got there in the end, and then it was. I felt myself trying to lift up out of Gar's voice. I'm like, no, I gotta stay down here. I just gotta be. He's gotta mm -hmm. be noticeable enough to not be the same voice, but not raise up to a higher pitch. I don't know if you find this too, but the hard part about that voice is that it's really it's okay to get into that level, but then volume wise. Volume wise, yeah. Yeah, to get people to understand you, you have to come out of it a little bit. Yeah, I, that's all my characters of volume wise. I have to be more conscious about it. Yeah. So, um, we're going to leave Gar there. We will be back next week with either Baka, Mior, or Genji. Ooh. And uh, we'll. I'll say continue uh, some of this story. Uh, We've been, we've been making with them um, so thanks everyone for watching thanks for coming out, we appreciate it let's keep making stories together and I will see you guys next week Ooh, toodaloo